This set of questions comes from the uh, file Project Management Exercises, uh, and I will work through them from beginning to end. There is a question one, and there is a question two. I will do them, but on separate clips. Let's construct the project network diagram for this particular project. Okay, I'm just going to go from left to right because it's much easier to, uh, to sort of see that. And so we go start with a start. Up or down, left to right, doesn't matter. But we do want to start. Now we do see when we look at this that A and B do not have any immediate predecessors. So that means they're beginning activities. So we got an A and we have a B. And then we looked at C depends on B. Okay, so B goes to C. We're all set there. D requires A and C. So let's put D someone in the middle there. C needs to be done. And A needs to be done. Then D may begin. E depends just on A. Okay, let's go straight to there. E just depends on A. And then lastly, I see F depends on D and E. F depends on D and depends on E. And, and then we go from F to finish. Nothing, that finish, end, whatever you want. But we do want to note that there's a beginning and there's an end to this process. Okay, and so that's sketching out the the network diagram. It's not too not too terribly hard. Okay, now I'm just going to write down the times of or the durations of each one of these projects just above the activity level. So five, one, two for C. 4 for D, 6 for E, 3 for F. Just lets me keep track of uh, what's happening uh, across uh, this particular question. It also lets me kind of start to think of critical paths, which are an important part of what we want to do, and can I determine that fairly quickly. So for critical paths, I can just now think of what's the pathway, A, E, F, let's say, A, D, F, right? those are a couple of critical paths, and then I also got the B pathway, B, C, D, F, B, C, D, F, and now I can ca count up how long A, E, F it takes, you know? so for instance, 5 plus 6 is 11 plus 3 is 14 right? so I can think of time and time in this case is in months by the way a df right? a 5 plus 4 plus 3 and I get 12 and b c d f 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 3 and I get 10 okay? so clearly we can kind of see that the critical path is a e f it's the path duration that's the longest and it sets how long the entire project will take. And in this case, the estimated duration of this entire project is 14 months. Next kinds of things that we can sort of, uh, we can start to think about here is thinking about all those activities. So we have A, we have a B, C, D, E, and F. And each one of those activities has an early start time, has an early finish time, has a late start time and has a late finish time, has an activity slack and has a free slack. So earliest start time for A, well A, be A begins the process, so early start time for A is zero. It takes five months for A, so earliest finish time is five. B also starts in period zero, so earliest fin start time is zero, and it finishes in period Number one, C begins when B finishes, so C can begin in period one, takes two months, ends in period three. Uh, D requires uh, both C and A to be finished, the later of the two, which means that D cannot begin until period five when A is completed. And it takes four periods, so it takes until period nine or month nine, and D is completed. E 
uh, requires A to be finished, so E may begin once A is finished, and that is in period 5, for month 5, takes 6 uh, months, so E's earliest finish time is month 6. I mean, month 11, sorry. F uh, depends on uh, D and E to be completed. The later of the two, D and E, which means that happens in period 11, plus 3 is period 14, right? which conforms to what we would expect from uh, the critical path, which ends in period 14. The, the, the project takes 14 months. We've got it finishing in the in regular course of uh, life, finishing in 14 months. Okay, so latest start, latest finish times now. Well, the latest finish time is going to be the 14, so that's sort of locked in, that's what's solid. And now we start to work backwards. Uh, F takes three months, so 14 minus 3 is 11. And uh, and then we go from... Now we keep note that we save ourselves a little bit of grief. A, E, F are on the critical path, which means earliest start and latest start, earliest finish, latest finish are going to be the same. So I'm not going to really think too much on the AEF stuff, okay? So 0 and 5. So my thinking will have to come with uh, activities B, C, and D. Because they will have some slack. So I can even go further and say no activity slack, no free slack, no activity slack, no free slack, anything on the critical path. I just make myself, I just make my life easier. Just knock off the, uh, the low-lying fruit, if you will, or pick the low-lying fruit and, and, and just move on to the stuff that really requires thought. So activity D now, what's the latest finish for activity D? Well, activity D uh, is a predecessor activity to activity F. So F cannot begin later than period 11, which means that D cannot finish any later than period 11, right? Otherwise, it'll impact when period F can begin and then delay the whole project. Working backwards, D takes four periods or four months, 11 minus four, is seven. Same kind of thinking with C. Uh, we have to start to think of uh, for C, what's the latest finish time for C? Well, uh, D depends on C, or C is a predecessor activity to D, and D can't start, I uh, can't finish uh, any later than, uh, okay, sorry, can't start any li later than period seven, so C must be done by period seven, otherwise there's trouble. Minus the two, and C's latest start is period five. And then lastly, we go into period B. Uh, C depends on B. C can't start any later than period five, which means that B has to finish by period five, and then B takes one period, and so B has to start no later than period four. Okay. Activity slack, if we remember, is the length of time uh, where you, if you delay a certain prod, a certain activity, uh, the maximum amount that you can delay a certain activity before the entire project is delayed. Typically, if mathematically, we see it as the difference between the start times, latest start minus the earliest start, or the difference between the finish times, uh, earliest finish minus latest finish. So we can either go 5 minus 1, 4 minus 0, either way we get a 4. Uh, same story with uh, C, we can go 5 minus 1 or 7 minus 3, either way we get a 4. And D, 11 minus 9 or 7 minus 5, either way we get a 2. Free slack, however, is a little bit more restrictive. It's because there's activity slack does not mean there has to be free slack. Okay, All, the, all that uh, free slack means is that any delay in a given activity will delay the, the activity that follows it. So for instance, let's look at activity B. Any delay in B? Well, the activity that follows C is, I'm uh, sorry, activity that follows B is C. Any delays in B will result in a delay in C. Okay, so no free slack there. Now, even though there's activity slack, there is no free slack. Now we look at the difference between C and D. So D requires uh, C to be completed, also requires A to be completed. And now we start to think of, okay, so D has to begin uh, no later than <laughs> a 
a little bit of a stutter delay there nasty sneeze um so now free slack is a little bit more like we were just talking about is a little more fr uh restrictive than activity slack and free slack is just again the time the activity can an activity can be delayed before it delays the next activity again much trickier to kind of wrap your head around so mathematically we see it as the early start of the next activity which would be if in case in C's case would be D minus the early finish of the current activity so the early start of the next activity is D is 5 and then minus the early finish of the current activity which for C is 3. So 5 minus 3 becomes 2. Okay, so if C is delayed by 2 months, that means it'll finish in period 5, which matches up when D uh, begins, or the earliest start for D. Any delay, so if whatever hypothetical happens that C is delayed by, let's say, 3 months, well, we had a slack of 2 months, but now that 3 months means that uh, D will be delayed by one month. Okay. Now, the overall project won't be delayed because if C is delayed by three months, it had an activity slack of four months, which means if C takes three months longer than expected, uh, it'll still have an activity slack of an extra month. So although a delay of three months of, on C will delay D, it won't delay the entire project. So there's your sort of the incorporation of free slack and activity slack and how they're different and how they um, impact the project activities and the project overall uh, differently. So now last one we do is D. Again, keeping the same idea, early start of the next activity for D, which is F, so we have 11, minus the early finish time of D, which is 9, and that is 2 as well. Okay, so again, D can be delayed uh, up to two months before there's any impact on, on activity F. Now, D is activity slack is also 2, because when D delays an activity, D is going to be delaying an activity that's on the critical path. So when if D is going to if D is next activity uh, is on the critical path, then you will see that activity slack and free slack will be the same. Notice how for C C's next activity was activity D, which was not on uh, the uh, critical path, and so it had a free slack of a different number than its activity slack. Okay, so we've got all that. Now, let's let's do this. Is sort of um, all question B, part B stuff. Let's look at C now. And if all act other activities take the estimated amount of time, what is the maximum duration of activity D without completing uh, the project? Well, D had an activity slack of two, which means D normally takes four weeks. Right? The normal course takes four weeks. We have a slack of two weeks. So uh, C, uh, sorry, for activity D can be, can take as much as six months before it starts to have an impact on the project. And that settles out question number one.